All right, it's the it's the holidays. Yeah, it's a really tough time for uh, people like me who work in the counseling and psychology fields and that kind of thing. The holidays are really bad because uh, so many people have had uh, tragedies happen during the holiday period, and every every year it rolls around. They kind of look at it with some dread, trepidation, and so on. So. Uh, it's not easy to get through the holidays. Besides that, here in America, the whole thing's trashed. It's all uh, rot gut commercialization. It's just all a bunch of garbage. <clears throat> but anyway, not all, 90%. So it's a tough time of year for counselors. All right, the uh, seminars on, on curses, and you need to get rid of all these family curses that go back. God only knows how long, because we need to get rid of all this garbage and start 2018 out ready to go. That's really what we need. We don't, we don't need any more family curses. Okay, so let's do that on the last Friday, next Friday, I believe it is. And then she was mentioned in the deliverance training class, that's on the 30th, Saturday, at noon, I'll see you here for that, if you happen to be interested in that kind of stuff. I added another radio program. I'm on uh, Saturdays now in the early evening and Sunday afternoon at 4. Also on during the week, Monday through Friday in the morning and in the afternoon on 1010 a.m. Okay? If you... Uh, You're still on at 7 o'clock also. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I heard, that's what I heard. I heard that I'm not supposed to be on, so hey, you know. So it's still on the other one, apparently. So I haven't gotten another bill. So uh, if you put in our uh, a charity name and switch over from Google to SoundCloud, Hardcore Christianity, they'll donate money to us in 2018 every time you surf the web. Thanks for that. Don't forget next uh, January in January. The first Friday of every month is Rick Cat Night. He's a wonderful teacher and he'll blow the place out. Okay? So bring the sick on the first Friday and they'll go home healed. Yeah. All right. And then we have four YouTube channels. Tonight's is being broadcast on number two, House of Healing AD. Hello to all of our YouTube viewers. We have a lot more YouTube viewers and we have people here that come here in person. Which is uh, fortunate because with these altar calls, man, I don't, I don't have the staff to handle hundreds of people coming down to the altar to get delivered. So we're, this 2018 is going to be a breakthrough year for us. We need more altar workers. We need help here. Uh, there's a lot of sick people here in Maricopa County and there's a lot of sick people in this country. And it's getting worse. You can't even imagine the amount of emails I get and phone calls. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. People need to be healed. All right? If you'd like to get into the Deliverance or Healing Ministry, number one, the Deliverance Training Channel is your best bet to go. You just start at session one and go through to session 18. Our Thursday night meetings are doing great wonderful altar calls and that is always broadcast on our live stream station okay so we broadcast Thursday nights on live stream both services start at seven o'clock of course or basically whenever you get here if you know somebody that needs to be delivered and is too uh, afraid to come for help I send out these two lists that take you through step by step method of going through self-deliverance just send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com and go to the website and hit the testimonial page if you want to read some of the testimonies of the people that have been delivered using them lists they do work uh, youtubers don't forget about opening your terror cell in 2018 in your church you start terrorizing the devil by picking off the sick people Okay, please remember that one of our main goals here in the ministry. Hey, thank you for your donations last year. It was fantastic. Paid every bill on time. Wasn't late for nothing. 
All the Healing House bills got paid. Thank you for what you've done. Uh, we installed an electronic system which locks all the doors when the service starts, and they don't open again until... If you need a donation receipt for 2017, the new tax law passed. And it starts in 2018. It starts right away. There's no grace period. Okay? That means that the uh, government is lowering the rates. They're going down. So that means that your deductions that they've left for you to take will be of less value. So if you're thinking about making a donation to someone, us or someone else, I would do it before the 31st because the actual value of the donation with the higher tax rates, it's worth more. The tax rates are all going down starting January 1st and uh, uh, the whole system is changing. The good news is you can uh, still deduct charitable donations under the new tax code, which is going to save a lot of us. If you need a tax receipt for this year, I'd be happy to give it to you. Send me an email, give me a call, whatever, and I will send it to you. Thank you. You can donate it if you want to on the website. And thank you for your kindness. Let's get going here. Uh, if you looked at Ezekiel 28 or Isaiah 14, you would read some spectacular material. It's incredibly revealing. It's about the devil. And it gives you insights into Lucifer you can't find anywhere else in the Bible. It's really quite remarkable. But the sum and substance of it was, Lucifer changed into another person. He was the greatest thing God ever created and had more blessings and more everything than God ever gave anybody. And he changed because he became self-absorbed. He became a selfish, self-oriented person. And he developed a mental illness. You know what it was? There's narcissistic personality disorder. He became a narcissist. And a narcissist is a person that has put themselves first. Anybody who's ever been married to a narcissist lived a life of pure hell. Narcissism is one of the sickest of all mental illnesses. And it's extremely hard to get delivered from it. The demons for narcissism are very difficult to get out. And they're very powerful and very intelligent. Satan is a narcissist. And that's what he became. He always uses me and he always uses I. And if you've ever known anybody who was a narcissist, you notice they have certain personality traits and there's one thing that they hate more than anything else and that's to be told no. A narcissist hates being told no. Well, I tell you it's a four letter word you wouldn't believe. They will go berserk. They want it yes, they want it their way, they want it when they want it, they want it how they want it. I just summed up Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 for you. The devil hates that word more than any other. He hates to be told no. He freaks out. Let's check it out. Nebo was one of the great gods 2,500 years ago. Have you ever heard of him? He was a super-powered god, and in fact, they built a temple to Nemo. Uh, Nebo on top of 
the mountain where Moses stood where he said goodbye to the Jews Moses wasn't allowed to go into Canaan land because he disobeyed the Lord in front of everybody he embarrassed the Lord in front of the Jews he was told to do what speak speak to that rock and command the water to come up and he didn't do it what happened to him well it would have happened to me I don't have any criticisms of Moses at all personally uh, if you had to work with as many crazy Jews as he had to work with I would have lost my temper too I would have gone I would have freaked out <laughs> they were constantly complaining and griping oh my god you wanna you want some free advice on how to destroy your anointing and ruin your life quickly and efficiently you do let me help you file complaints against God it causes the Holy Spirit to shut instantly down the Bible calls it quenching the spirit as soon as you start griping and complaining to God it shuts the whole system down well in the Old Testament the Jews were constantly griping and complaining and Moses had had it up to here you can only take gripes and complaints so long and you start to lose it have you ever been around somebody who was chronically complaining and griping and you can't you can take it for a little while but then gotta have a drink gotta have a shot or you gotta do something break something they drive you crazy well that got to Moses he took that staff and he smashed that rock a river come flowing out of there incredible miracle and that was the end of it he never got to go into Canaan land he did all that work for all those years and never made it in what an interesting lesson to learn well anyway on top of the mountain where he waved goodbye to the Jews they built a temple right here to Nebo it's in Jordan and this was the statue of the god Nebo and it was taken by the British years ago and taken to London and here's where it sits or stands I should say in a museum in in London that's Nebo right there that's what he looked like all right no no the devil hates that word more than anything in the world that makes him furious three guys told him no check it out you know the story right Daniel goes to King Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar is a narcissist he's massively self-absorbed he's just like Satan all he thinks about is himself all he cares about is himself everything's all about him it's all about me well he has this dream you remember the story he has a dream and he wakes up the next day and the dream scared him but he can't remember it so he calls in his soothsayers they've got skills to divine in the spirit world and he said hey I need you to interpret this dream I had last night they said oh Nebuchadnezzar absolutely what was the dream he says well I can't remember the dream what whoa the demons got to have something to work with he says listen if you don't interpret my dream I'm gonna kill all of you Wow now that's putting the pressure on particularly when you don't even know what the dream was you got to be a pretty good soothsayer 
to come up with a dream a and then interpret a dream you got to come up with that's doubling down well guess what they couldn't come up with anything and Nebuchadnezzar says hey I'm gonna get rid of these soothsayers they had their own division in his kingdom and they were all astrologers and they said hey wait a minute here there's another guy who interprets dreams for Jehovah or Yahweh and hey this guy is got some skills and he's Jewish so let's dump it on him shrewd that's how you get out of getting executed so they went and got Daniel and they brought him in and you know the story he gets the dream and he gets the interpretation incredible now that's the Holy Ghost for you he'll outrun the demons any time somebody puts their faith in him well then you know the rest of the story he goes through the dream and he explains to Nebuchadnezzar about his his kingdom about the future of Babylon he tells him about the Persians the the Greeks he tells him about Rome the tribulation Rome during the tribulation he tells him about the second coming an amazing section of text quite remarkable Daniel chapter 2 King Nebuchadnezzar what's his name mean Nebo protects Nebo saves that's what his name means he was a worshiper of Nebo fell upon his face and he worshiped Daniel and commanded that he should be honored and started giving him a bunch of great stuff why because he gave him the interpretation of this dream and the soothsayers couldn't do it and he told him what the dream was and then gave him the interpretation quite remarkable and the king said hey your God is God of gods and Lord of Lords and a revealer of secrets and you revealed this secret to us oh King Nebuchadnezzar thought Daniel was incredible he was his biggest fan and he was Jehovah's biggest fan the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. So now Daniel, who was separate from the soothsayers, is now in charge of them. He gets promoted over the other mystics, wise men, astrologers, soothsayers, the whole bit. Daniel clicks to the top. And it says, Daniel decides to bring three of his friends. Right? Prophets in training. Who were they? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They get promoted with Daniel. They're buddies. Daniel and his three, three friends. Next chapter. Daniel 3 Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold and its height was three score cubits and its breadth six cubits check this thing out this thing was huge Nebuchadnezzar decided he was tired of worshiping Nebo so he wanted to get in on the worship stuff so now he wants to be worshiped which is a typical trait of a narcissist narcissists want everybody to focus around them they want everybody on them they want to be the center of attention they want to be they want to get the first of this and the first of that they want to get all the benefits so look at 125 feet tall I think I think a telephone pole is about 40 feet isn't it does anybody know it's 35 isn't a telephone pole 35 40 feet so what you're looking at here this thing was big this thing was huge you could see it for a couple miles away it was awesome 13 feet wide that was a big base well he set it up in the plains of Dura in the province of Babylon it says 
and it was right here Right there. There's Jordan. Here's Israel We're right there That city is still there. It's called doer now to you are and here is where the temple was of this statue of Nebuchadnezzar. There's still some remains there. They found the pillar of it right there. Somebody got rid of the statue, but it was right there. This thing was big. And he sent to gather all the princes and governors and captains and all these people all around Babylon. And he wanted them to come to the dedication of this image. It says, Then all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together for the great day of dedicating this image. Hey, now the people are going to worship me because that's what narcissism is. It's all about me. Everything's about me. I come first, everything is next after me. It's all about me. They all stood around the image. Now, Babylon was a huge country, and this thing must have taken weeks or months to do. You didn't just fly in or take an Uber. It took a long time to travel back then. This was 2,500 years ago. So this took a long time to set up. He had to contact the provinces. He had to explain to them what they were doing. They had to make reservations to come. They had to pack. You don't just go somewhere without packing. And everybody walked. It wasn't easy to travel back then. And then the herald cries out, Hey, everybody, all nations and languages, listen to me. When you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, the harp, the sack butt. What's the sack butt? It's not a person who's an idiot. It's actually a stringed instrument. Psaltery, another stringed instrument. A dulcimer, a horn. All kinds of music. You fall down and worship the golden image the king has set up. Typical for narcissism. They want you to obey them. You want they want you to listen to them. They want you to take their advice. They want you to follow their instructions. You do it my way. That's the depth of Satan. That's his great sin. That's what cost him his kingdom. That cost him everything he'll ever have. He had to have it his way. He had to do it his way. That's what cost you your marriage the first couple of times. Remember that? Yeah, you had to have it your way. You didn't want to compromise. You're the boss. You know, third marriage come around. You want to marry somebody who's kind of docile. You can keep your thumb on them. Narcissists want to be in control. If they're not in control, they're not happy. If they're not happy, you ain't happy. You fall down and worship this golden Im image the king has set up. He said, and if you don't fall down, it says, verse 6, you are going to be cast into what? The atum. What the heck is an atum? It's a giant crematorium. What did the Babylonians do? Well, they cremated their dead. Burn them. Germany had crematoriums years ago. He said, if you don't worship this golden image, if you don't do what I tell you to do, because I'm a narcissist and I want everything my way. I'm tired of people worshiping Nebo, I gotta get in on that action. You worship me now. That's what narcissists do. They're very much like moss on a lake. Anybody here from the Midwest? If you lived in the Midwest on a lake 
and I did when I was a kid if you saw moss on the lake you were in trouble You know why it always grows ah, And it spreads moss spreads And if you don't stop it early it Spreads everywhere it kills everything it gets its and it chokes you out that's a narcissist. You've got to have it your way. You want it your way. You want everything your way. Wow, that's the worst thing that can ever happen to you. You know why? It's the spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist is narcissism, where you got to have everything your way. It's all about me. Self-absorption is the spirit of Antichrist. A narcissist will always put themselves ahead of God. Nebuchadnezzar put himself ahead of his God, Nebo. And there's a drawing of it. What happened was this thing was like three stories. You had the upper story of it. Where you put in the fuel wood different stuff to keep it burning you threw the people in the front gate and tossed them in down below and then there was sides on it where you clean it out this thing was big it was like a small three stories underground level and above ground this thing was big too they're big and they burn like crazy. Well, it says here, uh, Jesus used this story to help people understand the nightmare of hell. And Jesus said, most people die and go to hell. Most people will not be saved on this planet and most of them will go to hell Did you know that that's not Mike it's got nothing to do with me Jesus said that he said listen to get into heaven it's a very narrow road and the gate to get in small one and Jesus said few people Get on that narrow road and end up in heaven. He said the broad road that leads to destruction, he said most people go there. That's amazing. Well, he had to give you a visual of it. He had to teach it some way. He used this story. He used the Valley of Hinnom where uh, Jerusalem used to burn all their trash and garbage. They had a city dump just outside the walls of the city. And it burned day and night. And Jesus used the term Gehenna in Greek. Gehenna to describe the lake of fire where all demons end up there 100% 100% of all fallen angels end up in Gehenna the lake of fire 100% thank God 100% of humans do not end up there but Jesus said the majority end up there why the spirit of Antichrist, narcissism, the person putting themselves, their needs, their desires, their lusts, their wants, their interests, ahead of God, leaves them going through the wide, broad road that leads to destruction. And many go there, Jesus said. What's hell like? Well, it's um, it's remarkable. 
here's Matthew 13 this is a discussion about the return of Christ and the one of the seven judgments the judgment of the nations the Son of Man will come back with his angels and gather out of his kingdom what did he just say that's unbelievable How can, yeah, people you go to church with and you think are Christians sitting in your church are fakes, they're fraud. They don't make it. You know why? Too much self-absorption. It's all about me. me, 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 and these people offend God. Why? Because they put Him here and themselves here. My needs, my interests, my wants, my desires are here. My sacrifice and service to God is down here. They don't make it. They offend Him and they do iniquity. It says they will cast them into the furnace of fire where there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth this is a symbol of pain and suffering and regrets my guess is the regrets will be at the top of the list where they come up with that idea I read this story of the rich man and Lazarus he came to Abraham and yelled at him and you know one of the first things he said to him Can you possibly go back and save my brothers? Because he knew his brothers Were narcissists They were like Satan they were they had the spirit of Antichrist they put themselves here They put God here and others there the story of Lazarus and the rich man is he put himself here, he put God here, and he put Lazarus, the beggar, down here. Standard procedure for narcissistic personality disorder. Self-absorbed people have no time or interest for others. They don't make any sacrifices. It's all about me. What do I need? What do I want? That's all about Nebuchadnezzar. Back to our story, Daniel 3 again. At that time, he said, when all the music, all the people heard the music, they all fell down. Worshipping the golden image, the narcissist Nebuchadnezzar set up. And it says, at that time, there were certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. What a surprise. Everybody accuses the Jews all the time, don't they? Nobody likes Jews. The UN just voted last week yeah. some kind of a weird thing, blasting Jews again or blasting us because of Jews, something to do with Jews. Nobody likes Jews. The Chaldeans didn't like them. And by the way, part of the Old Testament is written in that language, correct? It's written in Hebrew and Chaldeans. And they said, well, hey, these, these, uh, these Jews, we don't like Jews. We don't want them living here. And we sure don't like being supervised by Jews. Daniel's up here, and his three friends are right under him. Yeah. He had three better friends than Job had. He had better friends than you've got. Trust me on that one. You ain't doing too well. We'll get to that in a minute. So what they do if they don't like Jude, they go, they start filing complaints about them. Jesus said something interesting one time. He said, "You know, if everybody likes you, there's something wrong with you." He didn't say the rest of it, so I'll fill it in with him. You know what you are? You're a fanny kisser. If everybody likes you, 
dude, stay away from me. <laughs> if everybody likes you, you don't stand for anything. You're, you're, you're a butt kisser. You're a phony. You're a placator. You're a wuss. You're gutless. No offense. Uh, the Chaldeans said, hey, we don't like Jews, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and start some trouble. How do you start trouble and quench the Holy Ghost? You start filing complaints against people. You start nitpicking them. Start saying negative things about them. And so he pointed out all the Jews. Well, not all the Jews needed to be straightened out because a lot of them were idolaters and they were weak in their faith. And so a lot of them weren't serving Jehovah. But these Chaldeans had run into three Jews who weren't doing that. So they came to the king and they said, hey, narcissist Nebuchadnezzar, dude, live forever. Oh, I'll tell you what. Narcissists love compliments. They love you to say nice things about them. They love what we call strokes. They love to be stroked. They can't live without it. They gotta be stroked. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. Oh, look at that body. Oh, look at that face. You, you, you're the bomb. They love to be told that. I'm telling you, they eat it up. Oh, God, it's so good. So the way you approach a narcissist, if you want something from them, duh, use your head, friend. You come in with a series of compliments. You make them feel good. I've had psychological training. <laughs> what he did was, hey, king, live forever. Great, great opening line. You, O oh king, you made a decree. Notice the you. You made, you, that every man who hears all the sound of the music, as soon as they strike up the band, guess what happens? You said everybody falls down and worships your golden image. Isn't that correct, sir? Yes, it is. You also said, Whoever does not worship your golden image, if they don't fall down and worship, hey, they get thrown in to the crematorium. Right? That, yeah. Oh, king? He said, yeah, that's right. He said, well, listen, there's a bunch of Jews running around here that... You have set them in charge of others. What's the point there? They're trying to show him that if you put people in charge who are screwing up, it will infect others around them. It's called incompetent business management. Have you ever worked for a company that was run by idiots, imbeciles, and boobs? Have you? It's frustrating. See, if you're not a complete idiot and only a partial one, you're trying to get some productivity going, but the people above you are so jacked up, the system doesn't work right. And don't point to anybody. Well, that's what they're saying here. Say, hey, these people are in charge. They're in authority. And if they're not going to listen to you, Mr. Narcissist, we got bad problems here. This company's not going to work. And in fact, these three guys are the ones that are not bowing when the, they strike up the band. These men, O oh king, they have one, number one, disregarded you. See, that's how you get a narcissist to do something you want. You got to learn how to, how to manipulate them. But you have to go through their ego to get them to help you, to get them to do what you want. You can't just go in with logic. That won't work. You can't go in with pushy. That isn't going to work at all. You got to go in like this. <laughs> Bend over. <laughs> then a narcissist. You've got their attention. Come on, folks. This is just regular human stuff. 
Number two, they, they don't serve your gods. See the use Narcissism, it's all about. And they don't worship your golden image. Great approach. These guys couldn't be doing any better. It was perfect. They hit every base. They rounded the bases. Home run. Well, this is what Babylon looked like. If you happen to notice this, this Babylon was huge. Look at all these countries that are currently involved in this old kingdom. And all these people came from God only knows where for this ceremony to worship this idol. 125 feet or whatever it was in the air. Nebuchadnezzar did exactly what they knew he would do. See, if you approach a narcissist just right and you insult his ego, you're going to get a reaction from that person because they're ego maniacs, as they used to be called. Years ago, egomaniacs with these. He flies into a rage. The devil has a furious temper. He's a narcissist. Have you ever had to work with a narcissist and had things go wrong? They get angry, angrier than the gates of hell, ah, and they hold grudges. They remember what you did. Narcissists. Almost a hundred percent of them, almost a hundred percent of them have high IQs. Oh, come on, Mike. No. If a person has a low IQ, they're just selfish. I did that for me. I enjoy I, I waited. All day to give her that line. No, people that are stupid aren't aren't necessarily narcissists. They just want stuff their way. That's just a normal human trait. Narcissists are different. They have high IQs and they can control their environment to get what they want because they're outsmarting the other person. Nebuchadnezzar was extremely bright, very intelligent person. He was smarter than Jezebel. Ahab wasn't a narcissist. He says, go get these three Jews. Yeah. He was like the United Nations. Nebuchadnezzar said, is it true? Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, you do not serve my gods? You don't worship the golden image I set up? Is that true? Is that a fact? He says, but now, now that I've called you in here, and I'm a narcissist, I'm the king, I'm the big cheese, I'm the top, top rung, I'm the big banana. I know what you'll do now. I know. I'm sure you'll do it now. As soon as you hear the music, strike up the band, I know what you'll do. You'll, you'll fall down on your knees. And you'll worship the golden image I set up. That's what he's telling them. And everything will be fine because you guys are doing a great job managing my business. You're an authority. You've done a, done a wonderful job. I don't know where Daniel is. He's not even in this story, but I'm sure Daniel was doing a great job. He wants to give him a second chance. He said, but if you don't do it, he says. You don't. Hey, everybody's watching me. I got the Chaldeans over here. I got the Babylonians over here. I got the council over here. I got everybody standing here looking at me. Narcissism is very cognizant of being watched. They're very concerned about their public image. 
how they appear to others is very important to them. He says, I'm going to throw you into the crematorium. And you're standing right here in the crematoriums over yonder. What God's going to keep you from going from here right into the fire? It's not going to happen. Okay, this is coming from the narcissist who, in chapter one chapter earlier, was singing the praises of Yahweh or Jehovah, and who was recognizing that Jehovah was the God of gods. And the great God of secrets, because Daniel had interpreted the hidden dream. Remember that? This is the same guy that had said that earlier. Even when the narcissist has a moment of clarity, they always lose it. And they go back to their true nature, which is self-absorption. They never change. They never change. If you're married to a narcissist, you know what I'm talking about. You've tried everything to live with them. You've tried everything to get along with them. You've tried everything to survive. You've submitted. You've surrendered. You've adjusted. You've changed. Never works. They never change. Satan never changes. He's history's most incredibly sick narcissist. He invented narcissism. Invented it. Who's going to deliver you out of my hands? Nobody. And then suddenly. This thing starts to change, and these three friends of Daniel told him, No, oh, when you tell a narcissist, No, ha, 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 ha. you have asked for hell to come to breakfast. When you tell a narcissist, No, your planet it will be dissolved. <laughs> What? A narcissist being told no. It's they're appalled. They can't believe you said no. Literally. Oh, here it goes. Uh, narcissist Nebuchadnezzar, Hasha. We are fully ready. We can give you our answer right now. We don't need to have a meeting over it. We don't need to talk about it. Let me just give it to you straight right here in front of everybody. The Chaldean, the accusers are over there. There's the other Jews. There's the Babylonian. Everybody's standing there watching this. Let me straighten you out for you real quickly here. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, not you, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hands. Okay, what was he doing there? He had... The three friends had read Kenneth Copeland's book on <laughs> word of faith teaching. So what you do with your word of faith is you just blab that sucker out, whether you believe it or not. Well, they went with Kenneth Copeland on this one, but they deviated from that teaching. Oh, this chapter wasn't in the Copeland book. But if not... Okay, what did Kenneth Copeland miss? God has works in mysterious ways. And even though it seems like the Holy Ghost is going to go that way, you as a child of God always have the understanding and the concept that maybe I don't have all the facts. Maybe I don't see the big picture. God does. So, even if I don't see the big picture God does, I don't have to have everything my way because I'm not a narcissist. I am a servant of the Most High God. And so therefore, 
my God will deliver me out of your hand. But if I've missed something, I don't care. I'm going to continue to serve him. And we will not bow. No. What? You tell a narcissist no, friend. Who? Oh, truckloads of flames from hell are going to come right up there and out there. You tell a narcissist no, baby, and your your life's going to change on the spot. Your life will change fast. Oh, and it changed. Here it goes. We're not going to do it. Period. Don't ask us again. Well, that did it. That did it. Oh, they, they finished themselves off. He blew a gasket. A gasket. There's all kinds of sexual harassment stuff on TV now. Have you know every every night there's a movie star, a business executive, or a politician, or somebody getting caught with sexual harassment. And the key to it is, believe it or not, isn't lust or sex. It's power. It's narcissism. Somebody in power. Is a narcissist and they feel they can do whatever they want or say whatever they want to you and since they're here and you're down here you can't do anything about it what am I talking about here the essence the essence of narcissism People with narcissism, if you tell them no, their face will change on you. You don't have to be a counselor like me for 35 years to read body language on a narcissist. It's an instantaneous change. Their face clicks. And when it clicks, you in some bad trouble. He said, hey, I am so mad, I can't even see straight. You insulted me in front of other people. Narcissists become particularly enraged when they are embarrassed in public. He flipped. He said, listen, go up there and load this thing with seven times more wood and branches and whatever they use to fire these things up with. I want this thing so hot, nobody will ever forget it. Because I'm so mad that you didn't do what I wanted you to do when I wanted you to do it. I'm going to show these three punks a thing or two. Have you ever read the Apocrypha? There's a lot of really interesting stuff in there. It's not divinely inspired, but a lot of it's really cool. This book here, the songs of the three holy children, I believe it was in the Dead Sea Scrolls as well. This is in the Apocrypha, and the story of the three Hebrew children are in that, that's that book there. It's about them. I don't know if it's true or not, but I thought it was kind of interesting. It said in that book that they heated that uh, crematorium up so uh, hot that the flames coming out of it up through the Vents was a hundred feet high. I mean, this was not a, you know, a cookout at the <coughs> Laguna Beach where you've got hot dogs there. I mean, this is a, this is a serious, this is a California fire. That's what this is. This is a California fire. I mean, he was furious. Why? He got told no. He commanded the mighty, the most mighty of men. Yeah, I bet he did. They took out the biggest and strongest guys and they bound them and took them up the walkway to the front of the furnace. 
because that's where you throw the person in and They did they took them up there and they cast them into the burning fiery furnace They never said a word in protest. They never filed a complaint. They never said anything They said their piece and that was it Because they weren't narcissists. They were servants Quite a big difference between an Somebody who's all about me and somebody who's all about the Lord. And they was he was so mad, he said, throw them in there with all their clothes on. Just toss them in. Don't even wait. Bind them up now and take them up there, heave them in there. So they uh, took them with their coats and their uh, patish. Is a gown they wore for their jobs, you know. The three Hebrew children were like the three wise men. They were astro astrologers. They were spiritual people, mystics, and they wore these outfits of the people that were in that unit. They wore these robes that had fanned out at the bottom kind of like hourglass They threw them in there with all their nice clothes on from work. Oh, that's frustrating It says but because the king's command was urgent and the fire exceedingly hot the flames coming out of the fire Burnt up the guys who were throwing them in they ended up with Third degree burns and died from their exposure to the flames. A really sad thing happened here a couple of years ago. These hot shots up in northern Arizona, all 18 of them, had a similar experience to these guards that threw uh, these three Hebrew children in that fire. They all died of <coughs> exposure to flames. Not a, a pleasant way to die, I'll tell you that. I can imagine. I wouldn't know personally, but I, I would imagine it was horrible. Be my guess. They fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. We're still in Daniel three, and then Nebuchadnezzar notices something. The flames are dying down a bit, and he gets up and he goes up to the front of the crematorium. He looks down in there, and he goes, "Didn't we throw in three of these <laughs> Jews?" And they said, "Yes, we did." Yep, no problem there. The three guards that threw him in there laying over there dead. He said, Look, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. And there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're not being burned up. They're fine. Fourth one looks like the Son of God, as a phrase used to describe angels. Sons of God. And he says, Nebuchadnezzar came by the burning fiery furnace and he yells down in there. Hey Shadrach Servants Not narcissists, but servants of the most high God Come out of there And they did they climbed out and Incredibly it says they did it in front of everybody. Everybody saw the whole thing happen. They all wanted to see those three Jews barbecued, but when they weren't, they were all there watching this incredible miracle. Why this miracle happened? Because it wasn't all about those three. They were humble servants, not self absorbed, me oriented people. They climb out and Chalet the power of the flames had no authority over these three men Their hair wasn't even singed That's impossible Their their coats weren't even burned up They didn't even smell like Fire had been on them. Okay, now that's the biggest miracle of all because I've barbecued before. You know, if, if you stand there, 
Okay, and it starts to get a little hot, right? So you take another step back you can feel your hand heating up and you're you need a longer stick and you smell yourself later I, I smell like a barbecue and I wasn't in the flames I was standing back using great skill to rotate <laughs> this is literally incredible how the Holy Ghost could have protected these three guys from even the smell of smoke that's unbelievable if the flames are going a hundred feet high and the three guards were burnt to death or died after their injuries third-degree burns I mean that was a vicious fire that was a vicious fire that was huge yeah that was a San Bernardino fire it was big no sm that's amazing that's an incredible miracle and then Nebuchadnezzar goes back to chapter 2 okay. yep he gets another revelation of, Je of Jehovah and for a moment he's converted again <clears throat> the only time I've ever seen a narcissist saved was when they were crushed my own personal experience they had some kind of a horrible traumatic event happen to them and that's the only thing that gets through to people who are self-absorbed you can talk to them to your blue in the face God can give them mercy from morning till night from here to there God can pour grace on them like you can't even believe they never change until an unusual traumatic event hits their lives they'll never change by just negotiating with them yep it's kind of like talking to a drug addict but it's worse drug addicts don't want to be drug addicts you can talk to them you're blue in the face and they they won't change but they want to change narcissists don't want to change in fact they don't even notice they're narcissists it's so natural to them to want everything their own way the spirit of Antichrist he says my gosh this is incredible an angel came down and delivered his servants and they even changed my words and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any other God translation this incredible miracle got through Nebuchadnezzar's narcissism it made a dent in the guy Narcissists and other people like drug addicts and others usually will never change until they have to face terrible trauma. In the counseling business, in the drug field, they call it hitting a bottom. The addict has to hit a bottom before you can do an intervention. If they don't hit a bottom, they're not going to go for it. Narcissism is worse than drug addiction. The demons are stronger, believe it or not. And the only way they can be saved is if they're traumatized. Isn't that sad? That's a sad condition to be in life when you have reached a point in these four or five or six little areas where nothing on this planet earth nothing in God's kingdom or the human kingdom will ever save you until you are traumatized
when I counsel people like this, I always, sometimes I even beg them, listen, would you just consider changing? Because if, if we keep praying for you and the Holy Ghost is going to answer our prayers, you're going to have to get broken to change. And that can be life shattering. Some people will not come to God unless they are smashed. Well, he's traumatized. Everybody saw this miracle. There wasn't any way even a narcissist of his stature could get out of this thing. This was a miracle that could not be denied. Everybody saw it, and he was converted temporarily. He says, I make a decree that all these people, all the nations, every language, all through Babylon, that map I showed you everywhere, if you say anything against Jehovah, the God of these three Jews, you will be executed. What kind of execution was it? Well, if it was a decree of a king, they chopped your body up, and then they tore your home down and turned it into a sewer. So everybody then used your property and your house as a place to go to the restroom. No, literally. And people taking a dump in you, on your property on top of you was symbolic of the judgment the king or whoever it was gave to you and a symbol of the horrible deed you did. That's how they did it back then. Nowadays, we call it social media. But anyway, <laughs> what this is, you will be cut in pieces and your houses will become a sewer for the whole community. Everybody, hey, we got a new place to go to the bathroom here. Because no other God, including me and Nebo, can deliver like this. What's the key to getting these kind of miracles from God? Being a polar opposite of a narcissist, which is a servant. The total opposite of a narcissist is a servant. Well, I've seen narcissists serve. Yes, you have. I have too. But there's always an ulterior motive in what they're doing. See? They'll serve when they can be seen, serve when they can get a benefit, serve when they can get paid, etc., etc. Not real servants. They'll serve when nobody's looking. A real servant will make sacrifices. A real servant will put Father first. No other God can deliver like this. So the king did what? They got another promotion. There you go. What's the lesson of that story? Well, there's several of them, but here's the one I need to get through here. When you tell the devil no, when you tell the devil no, you better be sure you're not just a Christian. You better be sure you're looking to become a disciple. You know why? Because you may have to pay a price for telling the devil no. Everybody skips that part and goes right to the promotion part. No, I read the whole story to you. That's how you do God's Word. You don't take it out and piece it up. You look at it in context. When you tell the devil, no, I'm not going to do this sin anymore. No, I'm not going to hang around these people. When you tell him no, he freaks. And I want to tell you something. It may not go well for you. For a little bit there may be a sacrifice and a price you have to pay to tell the devil no but if you don't tell him the price you will pay will far out distance any price you pay here 
you got to learn to tell the devil no and not equivocate about it yeah some people you ever had to work with somebody who was a, a conflict avoidance person they'll do anything not to get in a conflict situation with somebody oh my god oh shoot <laughs> How can I word this? Uh, you're doing great with everything we're doing, but some some people may need some slight manner, major modifications. <laughs> See, when it comes to the devil, he sees right through that. And Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, what they weren't just looking at Nebuchadnezzar, the narcissist. They saw his God behind him, and it wasn't Nebo. It was Lucifer the destroyer and they know how to talk to the devil Christians don't they kiss his butt and compromise and ooh, sorry about that they just told him right to his face no they knew they were going to get it See, any disciple knows that Christians don't they want the easy road out a disciple knows when he tells the devil no there may be a temporary price to pay and they're willing to pay it yeah they got their promotion that's great check this out Nebuchadnezzar Goes back to his old ways. What chapter is that? Four. The nice thing about Nebuchadnezzar, he doesn't waste a lot of printed material in the Bible. He gets right to the point. <laughs> chapter four. Do you remember the story? He's walking around the uh, castle he built, which Saddam Hussein, by the way, had made one of his residences. Remember that? The Americans took over uh, that uh, property when they invaded and it was one of our strong strongholds with the Marines anyway He says hey, I did all this I built this I built this for my glory This is all about me once again. He had forgotten about Daniel's dream. He forgot about the three Jews whom the smoke wasn't even on their body he forgot about the fourth man in the fire. Why? Narcissism is the toughest, toughest evil to overcome. He went right back to it. Daniel had come in and told him, listen, why don't you repent of your sin? Turn your life over to the Lord. Stop, stop this insanity. Daniel walks out and Nebuchadnezzar does exactly the opposite. Narcissists don't listen self-absorbed people. They don't care what you think. They don't care what God thinks They only care what they think Guess what happened to him He came down with a severe mental illness lycanthropy. He thought he was an animal He lost his kingdom for seven years Why? It was all about me. He wouldn't listen. You know the rest of the story. Chapter five is fantastic. That's the one where the handwriting's on the wall. Remember that story? Chapter six: the Persians take them. Darius the king overruns them. Daniel's thrown in the lion's den. Remember that story? That was a spectacular story. Cyrus the Great takes over in chapter 6. Remember him? And then chapter 10. Wow! The most amazing prophecy. The other one Daniel did, interpreting dreams. Yeah, that was chump change compared to this one. This was the prophecy of the rest of the world. Incredible. He tells us everything the future of the Middle East. Alexander the Great, 
the coming of Christ. It was incredible. Not until the great Apostle John wrote Revelation was there another prophecy like this one anywhere in the Bible. Why? What happened? Daniel said, no. Gently and kindly tell no. I'm not going to serve. I'm not bowing down. I'm not going to face that way. I'm facing this way. Oh, we're going to throw you in with lions. Whatever. What was Daniel? He wasn't a Christian. He was a disciple of God. Oh. He realized that, hey, if you tell the devil no, there may be a temporary price to pay for telling him no. You're going to take, continue to take drugs? No! Oh, you really? Okay. There might be a little temporary price to pay for that. Joseph got it, didn't he? He sure did. Joseph said no. Genesis 39, it came to pass that his master's wife cast her eyes upon him. And he said, Joseph, let's hit it. <laughs> now what was this girl? Potiphar's wife, right? Remember this story? You know what she looked like, don't you? She was a knockout. He wasn't some 70 year old hag. Not gonna work. Potiphar had a trophy wife. This baby was built. She was sharp looking. How old was Joseph then? 30. Good looking guy in the prime of his life. This couldn't have been any better. This was perfect. Trophy wife, secret affair. You're in your 30s. Hey. 90% of Christians would have said, let's kill it. <laughs> See, Christians compromise their faith all the, all the time. They're, they're spiritual losers. Disciples are able to tell the devil, no. And he did. She said, hey, honey, he said, whoa, hold on here. What was he doing there? Disciples can see the big picture in the natural world. They can see the spirit world. Christians can't. They just live with blinders on and they just go by feel and they go by sight and they just struggle through. Disciples see the big picture and they see the spirit world behind the natural world. That's the difference between the two. Joseph was a disciple. He could see the great Hebrew God even though she couldn't see him. He could see Jehovah. She couldn't. All she saw was he's packing. That's a GQ. Okay. Carnal Christians only see what's right in front of them and only what they have in their own miserable existence. Disciples see the big picture and the spirit world behind what they're facing. Joseph saw the spirit world behind the hot babe. And he says, listen, God is going to be very displeased with this your husband made me the master. I'm in charge of everything. He's put all of his faith in me. He put all of his trust in me. He trusted me. He put everything in my hand. He says, I'm the number one guy in the house beneath your husband. The only thing he kept back from me was you, you honey. He didn't want anybody taking the trophy wife. Joseph said, that's fine with me. 
I'm not interested in her Why he can see the spirit world behind the girl His conscience wouldn't allow him to stab him in the back Christians live on a sliding scale with their conscience yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, honey, did we uh, take a trip uh, you know, in January? Uh, see, I did some business on that trip. Didn't I talk to some uh, drunk at a gas station about it? Yeah, let's write that trip off. Yeah, that's a ticket. No, Christians have a sliding scale when they do their taxes. Joseph didn't. Why? He saw the spirit world behind his taxes. He saw somebody else watching him fill the tax forms out. The Holy Ghost was watching him. The Spirit of God gave him that job and gave him favor there. I know this is going to sound weird, but Joseph was grateful to God. It's something you never see with Christians. It's what have you done for me lately, Lord? <laughs> Joseph was grateful for what God had done for him and for what he had done for him in the present. His conscience wasn't seared. How can I do this great witness and sin again? Translation, I'm looking at you, I'm telling you no, but it's not you I'm telling no to. I'm telling the devil no. See, your relatives and friends are not your problem. It's the person behind them. Joseph saw her in the natural, but he said, I can't do this. Because I see God beyond you. Supposedly, the world's going to be taken over by the government or somebody. And supposedly, everybody's going to be under surveillance someday. My guess is they'll probably tape cameras to our foreheads. When they do that, church attendance will plummet. Can you imagine following a Christian home? <coughs> kind of went quiet there, but can you imagine <laughs> taping a Christian when they're not at church? Trust me on this one. You won't, you won't invite them back. <coughs> You'll send them over to the Mormons. <laughs> Disciples don't care if you're watching them. They're fine day or night. In public or home alone. Why? They have an odd thing lacking in most people here in America now. It's called integrity. No one even knows what that word means anymore. So I said integrity. What is that Spanish? <laughs> it came to pass as as she spoke to Joseph day by day. Uh oh. There's other things other than narcissism that won't take no for an answer. One of them is passion and lust. Ooh, those demons are powerful. Not near as powerful as narcissism, but they're strong. Wow. You got lust demons, it's a constant battle day and night fighting those things off. You got to get those things out of your body, they'll drive you crazy. I had them for years, they drove me crazy for years. That's right. I read a research study that said that men think about sex like several times every I can't remember what the statistic was. It was it was shocking. Shocking. I mean, it was 
what was it? Don't raise your hand, but I think it was like you know, 50 times a minute or something like that. It was weird. It was it was I remember reading it. I wish I still had that old survey. I'm gonna look it up when I uh, I'm gonna teach that next week. Uh it, these demons are constantly pushing you for lustful things. It drives you crazy. At night, in the morning, it constantly drives you nuts. And they don't like to be tell, told no. They hate it. Oh, that pisses them off. They get mad. Well, she's mad now. She's she's. Stalking the guy He would not listen to her he was trying to ignore her. Oh boy. What's the lesson there? Oh You cannot ignore Spirits if you've got spirits in your body. They will not go away. They will not let you go They will not back off. They will not give you a break. They will haunt you to you take your last breath You can ignore them. Oh, I've heard that one before just ignore those thoughts Just ignore those feelings. Ha! What a joke What a complete joke. That's not gonna work Absolute asinine he tried to ignore her. Hey Joseph dude. Boop. You're not gonna ignore that babe She has got lust demons. They will not let her go and when you tell them no, they want it more. That's right. Yeah. Had a flashback to raising your kids, didn't you? I did too. Stop that. They want to do it more. Put that china down. You're going to break it. They go for the china every chance they get because you said no. It came to pass that Joseph went into the house to do his business. It really wasn't his business. It was it was his master's business, and he was a good employee and a good steward. And he went in there without thinking. Hey, everybody's got flaws. You can't be on your guard a hundred percent of the time. You can't do everything right a hundred percent of the time, can you? Nobody does that. That's unrealistic. Hey, we're human beings. We got flaws. I make mistakes. Hey. I need help. I'm a person. He goes in there. He's not thinking. He didn't check to see if she was around. He didn't check to see if anybody was there. Oops, bad mistake. She sleeps out behind the curtain <laughs> and grabs him. Hey, today's our day. Okay? <laughs> and she grabs him. Now that's a lost demon out of control. When you're physic, no, it isn't. It's happening right here in America right now. There's one sexual harassment thing popping up in the media, lit almost literally every day. Somebody goes down and they're physically grabbing people. The guy came out yesterday. Uh, he's grabbing the women's crotches on the, on the football player. Was grabbing her crotch on an airplane. Okay, let me give you just a, a tiny social tip: crotch grabbing. <laughs> Crotch grabbing can get you in trouble, and my recommendation is avoid that. <laughs> she reaches out and grabs his crotch, and he says, "What are you doing? What are you nuts? I'm out the door." And he runs out, and she is holding onto him and pulls his. Oh God! Oh no! He knew he ran from her. There's a big lesson here. Listen, not everybody is strong all the time. Not everybody can do the right thing all the time. We're all human beings. We all got flaws. I'm in the same boat. But this story is teaching us something wonderful. Sometimes, if you can't handle something, bless God, just take off and run. That's right. You're not a coward, it's self preservation. It's better to run from the devil than to him. Trust me on that one. And he just said, Man, I can't handle this anymore. I screwed up. I came into the house without checking if the butler was there and the maid and the. And she caught me. Oops. 
He said well, I'm I don't care whether she caught me or not. I'm not gonna do what's wrong I'm gonna run and he did he ran out he left his coat behind well, you know the rest of the story uh, His master takes him she files a complaint one after the other Hey, he tried to rape me I fought him off and I look I got his garment She the Bible says she told all the household servants that she told everybody that then she told her husband that Everybody believed her of course. They had to believe right hey, look at it. It's a political situation there. You're dead in the water You've got no voice there listen in 2018 I need to talk to you for a second if you're gonna tell the devil no Which I hope you will you may have to pay a temporary price for that It's not like the guys on TV where everything is just wonderful Okay, it don't work like that. This is real life out here TV that's on TV That's not real Them preachers aren't real. That's all marketing. This is real life here And if you want to make any spiritual gains in 2018 at all You better start developing your nose You said yes this last year or you tried to just ignore it last year. That didn't work. Joseph tried that. He tried to ignore it. You're going to have to face it. You need to face it tonight. You better do it now because 2018 is right around the corner. You can't afford to live 2018 like you've done 2017. You can't afford it. Just take my word for that. You can't afford that. Hey. You know what happened to him? He had to pay a price for that. He ended up in prison. Guess what happened? The Lord was with him. Yes. When you tell the devil no, yeah, he's going to pitch a fit. And he's a narcissist. And narcissists don't accept no. They won't take it. They will not take it. They'll fly off the handle. They'll go crazy and they may have to put the hurt on you temporarily You're gonna have to make a sacrifice That was a four-letter word for Christians Sacrifice you got to be kidding they run out the dope You may have to sacrifice something to tell the devil no but when you do, the Holy Ghost will not leave you. He'll look at you and say, hey, that's my girl. That's my boy. I'm staying right there with them. That's what happened to Joseph. He became, remember the story, he became second in command of the prison. Hey, he told the devil no, and he ended up second in command of. Now we we need to read this story about Joseph. Hey, what happens to you if you don't say no? Well, it's going to be a repeat of last year. But let me tell you something. There's other people who have not said no, and I'll tell you what. It went bad for them. It went very bad for them. And I want you to notice something. I want you to notice something. The devil usually uses people to get you. It's usually another person that he sends to you to destroy your life. Yeah. yeah, it's not just fallen angels or demons. No, they're 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 secondary players. It's usually a person. It happened to Peter. He backslid. 
He told Jesus he would follow him wherever he would go. In fact, he told Jesus point blank, I will die with you. He wasn't even there at the cross when Jesus was dying. He never even showed up. Typical mega church Christian. Oh, we'll be there. Got you covered. They don't show up. King Saul lost his kingdom and it was given to King David. Why? He listened to the people. People wanted the spoils and he gave in. Your 2017 sucked. Why? If you look back on it and just think about it carefully with me, you'll see most of your defeats and failures was related to a person the devil sent you to hurt you, to aggravate you, to lie to you, to betray you, to let you down. Most of the time, not all, most of the time, it was a person. Aaron would have been dead like that had Moses not stepped in for him. Why? He gave in to the people. And built a golden calf. Right. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Almost no one ever became an addict by sitting in a chair doing nothing, and out of the blue, drugs fell in their lap. <laughs> That's only happened in about 1% of the cases. It's always somebody they met. Brother Mike, my son, he got in with a bad crowd at. It's, it was people that took your children down. It, it, was a, it was a person they started dating. And their personality changed and they deteriorated right in front of your eyes. They became another person that you didn't recognize. Why? The devil sent them a person. Pilate could have been a Holy Ghost preacher off the hook, but it says he listened to the people. And he gave them Jesus and let him crucify him. The people pressured him into committing a hideous sin. Maybe the worst sin ever. He condemned the Son of God to die. He wanted to let him go. See, in 2018, you're not going to get any credit for what you want to do. This thing's not working. <laughs> Wishes and hopes and dreams don't fly anymore, dude. It's what you do that matters. <clears throat> In 2018, the devil's going to send you a lot of bad people. Critical people, nasty people, lustful people, liars, betrayers, backslabbers. You're going to get them. And instead of just trying to ignore them this year, you know what you're going to tell them? No! Did you re read Wigglesworth autobiography? Did you read it? Yeah. He was, said he was standing there watching that lady, and she was going to get on the carriage, and she was walking up to it, and he was watching her, and her dog's following her. Remember that story? Hey, the dog's following her. She turns around. Go back home, honey. Go home. Go on. Shush. Shoo. She keeps walking. The dog's still following. Wigglesworth's watching. Go back home. Go on. Go on, sweet. Go on. She gets up to the carriage. Go home! The dog looks, turns around, bolts for home. That little scenario made an impression on Wigglesworth's soul. He never forgot that. He mentioned it in his preaching. He learned that day, watching that dog, you don't treat the devil with kid gloves. You don't treat him lightly. That incident, I know this sounds nuts, that dog incident changed his whole life and changed how he ministered to people. They asked him, why did you punch that woman in the stomach? He said, I didn't punch her. I was punching the devil. Wigglesworth learned what Joseph learned. No! If 
you try to ignore him he'll take that as a yes she took it as a yes oh you're just playing with me oh you really want it I know you really want it you said no but I know you don't mean it that's how the devil looks at it but when she turned around and stomped her foot and yelled at that dog it stopped and took off and went home she got on the carriage If you compromise, if you listen to other people, dude, 2018 will be as bad or worse. 2017. The king of them all, of course, Solomon. He listened to all his wives, hundreds of them. Yeah, that's the smartest man that ever lived, had hundreds of wives. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, he's a genius. Are you going to say no this year? Will you do it? Will you say, tell the devil no? Don't just try to ignore him. I'm not going to listen to that. No. He'll come back if you just try to ignore him. He will not leave. He'll come back, but he'll come back at a different angle. He'll send you a different person. He'll come at you differently. You cannot handle the devil casually. You cannot handle the devil with kid gloves. He doesn't handle you with kid gloves, does he? Have you seen your health lately? Have you seen your family? You know, your mentally ill brothers and sisters, your jacked up parents, they died in agony and suffering with weird diseases. You think the devil handles people? Have you seen the news? He's slaughtering people like it's nothing all over the planet. He doesn't care. He hates everybody. Why? He's a narcissist. He only focuses on himself. He only cares about himself. That's all he cares about. Jesus. Jesus did it. Didn't he? He sure did. Lord, you can't go to the go to the cross and die. You're our king here. You're going to set up your kingdom here. He turned around and looked at Peter and started talking to the devil. Well, Peter wasn't the devil. What was Jesus doing? He told the devil no. In no uncertain terms. That's what you're going to do this year. Yes, you are. And God's going to be with you. And you might have to take a couple of shots here and there. That's true. But you're going to get a promotion. You're going to get a spiritual promotion. A financial one, a physical one. Why? Because you told the devil no. Do you happen to know some, notice something about these stories? They're really interesting. Nobody stepped in and told the devil no for him. Do you happen to notice that? Huh? The tent maker didn't run out of the corner. Leave him alone. No. Take your hands out of his pants. <laughs> Joseph had to say no himself. You have to do it yourself. You can't let somebody else do it for you. You got to stand and deliver and do what's right for a change. Because nobody else is going to do it for you. And remember, almost every time, not all, almost every time, it's a person that comes for you. Somebody you know. Somebody you'd least expect, a stranger, a friend, a co-worker, somebody in your family. The devil normally sends you a person to drag you down. And this year, you're going to say no. Jesus said no in the temple. Did he casually? Yeah. Why don't you guys take all these tables out of here? Yeah, geez. Take these doves out. Take all this Chinese stuff out. Walmart, take that stuff out. Oh, no, that never happened, friend. That never happened. 
Jesus got him a, a cord with a bunch of whips on it there He walked in that temple He wasn't throwing out the money changers. That's only what they saw in the natural world Jesus saw into the spirit world that was Satan that had turned God's temple into a financial whorehouse He got him a strap with a whip on it some kind of a whip He didn't try to do what Joseph did. I'll just ignore her. She'll stop chasing me. No, I'll just I'll stop Yeah, that don't work with the devil. He's a narcissist. He doesn't like to be ignored. Well, if you don't talk about the devil, he won't. You're already in the bag, dude. With that statement, you're already in the bag. He's already got you. You're going to tell him no this year. Huge. And if you have to cut some friendships, you're going to cut them. You know why? Because you know time is short. You're watching the news like I am. You see the Jews planning to rebuild the temple. You know they're building Babylon back up right now. It's currently under construction. You can see the Bible coming alive right in front of our face. You know you don't have much time left. You see the religions starting to come together. That's mystery Babylon, the new world order. It's, it's happening right in front of our eyes. 50 years ago, nobody saw any of this stuff. We're here now. We can see it. You don't have much time left to jack around and screw around and waste not even another month of your life. You know what I say? No! No! Am I talking to you? No, I'm talking to the devil controlling your life. He wants you to waste your life. He wants you to be a nothing and a nobody. Let's pray then. Father, tonight, 2018 is staring me in the face. It's staring all of us in the face. Tonight, Lord. The devil sent us a lot of bad people last year. We tried to annoy, ignore them, and we tried to avoid them, and we tried to stop listening to them, but that didn't work. They keep coming back. Father God, I got some people here tonight that took the coward's way out. They compromised their faith. They lowered their guard. They didn't listen. They hoped and wished for something different. It never happened because they never learned. They never learned to tell the devil no And tonight they have learned Like Shadrach Meshach and Abednego They told the devil no it wasn't Nebuchadnezzar. They were telling They told the devil no Joseph didn't tell her no He told the devil no he ran from the devil in that home and the devil and the demons are in some of our homes and in 2018 they are going to be removed and father God in the name of Jesus I place a curse of failure on every unhealthy soul tie each person in this room has to someone who is spiritually, emotionally, mentally, or physically damaging one of your children in this room tonight. I put a curse of failure on that soul tie. I bind that soul tie and that demonic curse, and I break <laughs> that curse and that soul tie from my friends here tonight, Lord, with that person in their life. It could be one, could be two, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. 
I break that soul tie in the name of Jesus Christ. I loose this man and woman of God sitting here tonight. I loose them from that soul tie to that person. The devil sent them to hurt them like King Saul, like Solomon. Satan sent them people to carry his message of doom. I'm going to break this soul tie in the name of Jesus. And each person right now, you know who that person is in your life. You know you need to break that soul tie with that person. You know you need to stop it and stop it tonight. 2018 and the tribulation is right around the corner. We can see it now. We know this thing's almost over. There's only a few years left. You don't have any more years to waste. Father God, we have to go now. We have to start now. We have to start tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm asking you, Lord, give each of my friends here tonight Holy Ghost fire in their souls to tell the devil, no, I will not obey. No, I will not sin. No. I will not serve. No. It's no longer all about me. I am not a self-absorbed person. I am not a selfish person. After tonight, I'm repenting of it in the name of Jesus. I'm asking the Lord to give them fire right now to change and tell the devil in no uncertain terms like Wigglesworth did when he saw that dog run home. You taught that great man of God a lesson he never forgot. And tonight God's word has taught us a lesson I will never forget. The devil has to be told no in no uncertain terms without compromising. Without a second quarter. He must be told no right to his face. And if we have to pay for that temporarily, we're willing to do that. We're willing to do that. Just raise your hands if you're willing to do that. You're willing to tell the devil no, even if you have to pay a temporary price for it, which is his retribution. He always fights back because he's mad. All narcissists fight back because they're mad because they heard no and they don't like no. You're going to tell the devil no in 2018. Your time is short. We all know all of our times are short. This thing's about to wrap up. It's only a few years away. Keep your hands up. Father God, you see these hands right there? They're the ones that want the fire and the faith and the courage. The courage. Courage to stand up and tell the devil no. 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 No, almost half the people have their hands up. No, in Jesus' holy name. Satan, I'm telling you no. I'm telling you no, in no uncertain terms. The person the devil sent you, no. I'm breaking that soul tie. Tonight, I'm releasing that relationship in 2018. I am no longer going to compromise my faith. I'm not going to go back on my word. I'm not going to live in sin. I'm not going to serve the devil. I'm not going to hurt other people. I'm not going to live for myself. No, I said. No. I said no. Satan, I said no. No in Jesus' mighty name. No in the name of the Lord. No in Jesus' holy. No, I said. Satan, no. 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 I say no to these evil spirits tonight of pride and selfishness and lust. I command you to come out of me right now. I command you to go now. No! Come out! Come out! Come out of me right now! Out, I said! No! Satan, no! Spirit, come out of me right now! Get out of my body! Get out of my head, you lying spirit! Stop lying to me. Stop saying negative things. 
Stop hurting me. Stop giving me sicknesses. Stop ruining my faith. Stop attacking me. Stop it in Jesus' name. Get out of my head. Alcohol and drugs. Lust, I command you. Get out. Come out now. Now in Jesus' mighty name. Now I said. I'm not going to ignore the devil in 2018. I'm going to face him and tell him, no. Stop it. Out of me. Out of my family. Get out of my children. Get out of my home. Get out. Get out and come out. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Get out of my stomach. Get out of my brain. Cancer, come out of me. Go in Jesus' name. Arthritis, come out of me. Spirit of infirmity, I command you, stop. Stop it. Come out. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out in the name of the Lord. Get out of my body right this second. Get out of my body right this second. Get out of my head. Ministry team, come out, come forward. Ministry team, come out of that body right now. I need some people over here on my right, over here on my right. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of my body. Come out now, I said. You are not going to ignore the devil anymore. You are not going to casually approach him anymore. You're going to fight back. You're going to do it now. You're going to do it now. Now, I said. Satan, lose your hold now. Lose my children now. Homosexuality, come out now. You lesbian, come out now. Hatred and anger, come out now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out now. Go in the name of the Son of God. In the name of the Son of God. Satan, I, I command you to come out now. Complacency, apathy, cowardice, come out now. Stupidity, ignorance, and lust, come out now. Drugs, come out. Drugs, come out. Alcohol, go. Go now. Get out of my body. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out right now. Loose me now. Satan, let my wife go. Let her go now. Let my wife go now. Let my husband go. Let my husband go now. Satan, come out now. <laughs> come out now. Get out of there. Come out now. Fight back now. Fight back right now. Fight back right now. Hurry up. Come on. Apathy. Cowardice. Apathy. Come out now. Come out now. Go in Jesus' name. Anger and hatred. Offenses. Taking offenses. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Taking offenses. Come out of me right now. Go. 
Get out of it, buddy. <laughs> Fight back now. Fight back quickly. Come on now. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Let's go. You can be healed right now. Put your hands on your body. Put your hands on your body. Command the spirit to come out. Command the devil to come out of you. Tell him to come out. Come on. Put your hands on your head. Bipolar, come out of my head. Lies, come out of my head. Put your hands on your head. Come out of my head. I repent. I repent. I repent of my sin right now. I repent of it. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. You people pleasers. You people pleasing spirit. Come out of me now. Let's go. Come out. <laughs> Satan, you come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Come out. Come out of there right now. Get out of my body right now. Come out. Come out right now. Every ugly man that ever touched me comes out tonight. Out. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Hurry up. Way out. Way out. Everything. You know what you need, sweetheart? What's wrong with you? Um, I just feel sick. I'm sore. I have. You feel sick? Yeah. What you sick with? I don't know. You don't know? Hold too on a much, second. Too much helping everybody else? No, that's not it. Hold that. Now, when you was a kid, who hurt you? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Who was the first person that hurt you really bad? Ow, 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 I have burns on my hand. Oh, put your hand down there. We're going to pray for you. Who's the first person that hurt you? How'd you burn your hand? It was all the way up my arm. It's fine. It's just my hand. What are you addicted to? What are you addicted to? Bad relationships. Were you raped and abused? Um, things that happened throughout my life to other people, my ex. Um, I was briefly with him, right in front of my kids. Yeah. Now, what happened was when those people treated you like that, a spirits entered your body. And the only way to get them out is if you'll pray and ask God to forgive all those people that hurt you. It is. Raise your hands, dear Jesus. I'm praying and asking you to forgive all these people that hurt me and abuse me. Repeat after me, Lord, I'm praying for all these people. Go ahead and list their names. I pray for them and I ask you to forgive them for hurting me. Have mercy upon them, Lord. If you need special prayer, if you need special prayer, come up here real quickly. We'll want to pray for you tonight. You need special prayer? Come up here right now. <laughs> you need a special prayer? <clears throat> Hi, sweetheart. How'd you like that teaching? How'd that go? Good. And what do you I, need? Okay, I don't ever want to be too prideful or narcissist or care about myself. I want to rid, I want to rid everything that. Oh, beautiful. Raise your hands. Close your eyes. Dear Lord Jesus. Please help me, Lord. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on. That's the Holy Ghost touching you. Forgive me for being self-absorbed. Forgive me for focusing on my looks and my life only. Forgive me, Lord. Have mercy on me. I'm so sorry for what I've done. I put other men ahead of you. I put my career ahead of you. And I'm asking you to forgive me right now, Lord. Please. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Come on, tell him. Let your tears go. Come on. 
Jesus. You're sorry, Jesus. Good. You're sorry. Thank you, Jesus. What's wrong with you, honey? I want to be a disciple. Yeah. I don't want to be a just a Christian. Oh, I good. want to be a disciple. I want God in my That's life. That's because you got a good heart. What do you got to get rid of? Just so, sometimes I feel that insecurity. Or yeah, that's uh, caused by fear spirits. Now, when you was young, did somebody hurt you or abuse you? No. no. Were you ever petrified or scared when you were young? That's my father. What did he do to you? Was it verbal? Abusive, physically, physically abusive. Did he slap you or molest you? Less than Slap. Verbal. Yeah. What was his name? Jorge. Jorge. Raise your hands. Raise your hand. There's Jorge's in here. He's blocking your discipleship. Yeah. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. There you go. Good. Breathe out. Keep breathing. Is Jorge alive? Father God, right now I want you to hunt Jorge down. I want you to put your hands on him and I want you to tell him that you love him. And he doesn't ever have to hurt anybody ever again. Let your tears go. Let them go. Good. And now, Lord, we must release Jorge from her soul. And he must go and be replaced by her Heavenly Father, who would never verbally abuse her or slap her or hit her, ever. Her Heavenly Father would never hurt her. Jorge, right, in the name of Jesus and all your demons, come out of your daughter right now. Go. Come out. Come out of her. Come out right now. Go. Her dad. What's still left in there? I don't know. What's the symptoms? I just, I What's wrong? Nothing wrong. I just want everything out. How do you know? I don't know that I'm. I know that I'm being healed. And now, uh, uh, what's like, left? You know, this afternoon I had the summer in like I'm having a baby, uh -huh. and I went to the toilet like something went. Oh, really? Okay, good. Uh -huh. and, uh, now is that still related to a witchcraft curse? Witchcraft, a lot of witchcraft since I was 16 years old. Oh, go ahead and repent of it, dear Jesus. I'm so sorry. Oh God, please forgive me. Oh, there it goes. Come out. Come out, you witch. Got witch. Come out of her. Come out, you witch. Come out, you witch. Right now, here it comes. Come out. Come out of her womb. Come out of her intestines. Come out of her gallbladder. Come out of her vagina. Come out right now. Hurry up. There he comes. Glory to God. Here it comes. Hold that. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Come out. What's left in there? It's in my spine. How to get in there? Uh, I, just, I was an extremely angry person, and I turned to, to lust and pornography. I've re been repenting the last you know, months. What triggered the anger? New age, Come on. Uh, witchcraft, sorcery. Probably my dad's death. I would figure I'm, I'm not it's just lost, rejection. Uh, Just wanted to control everything in my world. Fear, fear of losing more. I just went into complete control freak. All right, and that's uh, that's because you don't have any faith. Well, yeah, correct. Yeah, that was exactly yeah. fear of losing stuff because yeah. you don't have faith that God will take care of it. Yeah. Go ahead and repent of it. Repent. Come out. Now come out. Yeah. Unbelief and doubt. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Unbelief and doubt, come out. No, not having faith in my Heavenly Father. Come out, go. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Get out of there. Come out. There he comes. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. I want to try that guy. He's the Kansas City guy. I don't do nothing. He's got so many. Come out right now. Come out. 
Oh, nice. Like I saw you a couple of weeks ago. This was Nancy, my wife. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you come in to turn your life over to the Lord? I have. You have? Okay, good. What needs to come out of there? Negative thoughts? What lies? By who? He lies to you? Is that true? Yes, I have. Yes. Did you apologize? Yes. Are you still lying? I told her I don't want to lie. I know you don't want to, but are you still lying? He's still lying? When's the last time he lied? He lied to you on the email. What did he lie about? That I got really upset because I wouldn't accept what he said when he I just asked him one question and that was it. Okay, now, uh, are you Nancy? Oh, okay. Come on over here. Hey, listen. Uh, your husband, uh, you and your husband have, uh, he's got demons and so do you. And your demons and his demons, they butt heads. <laughs> there, there, there's no other way to fix this unless you release him to God and let him go. Yeah. Because, no, no you, no, you never did it. I'm going to show you how to do it. <laughs> If you don't release him, you're going to spend the rest of your time together taking offenses. Yeah. If a demon tells him to lie to you, that's a setup, and it, it works because you don't see that's not him. Yeah, I'm starting to see it for about six months. If you saw that it wasn't him, you wouldn't be offended anymore. You'd be offended at who's doing it, who is doing it. I slipped. I slipped. It's been okay. Okay. And so, you willing to release him to God and yeah. let him go out of here? Yeah. Okay, let's do yeah. it. Let's do it's it. It's him the kind of that he's what? pulling on me all the time. And he's <laughs> he's doing that or his spirits are doing it? I guess his spirits. Okay. Yeah, now, what we got to do is fix your discernment. <laughs> You think it's him. Right. So you get mad and frustrated and disappointed in him. Right. Which keeps you from being healed. Yeah. They're outsmarting you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, now let's get him. Ready? Raise your hands. Close your eyes. Lord Jesus, I came here tonight. I had an agenda when I came here, but now I'm going to change my agenda. I am going to repent, and these problems are me and nobody else. They're me, Lord. My discernment is poor. I take offenses. I get hurt. And I don't see the real enemy. And it's my fault. I'm sorry for doing this. I am so sorry. Because every time I take an offense against my husband, I get sicker and I hurt you. You told me to love my husband unconditionally and I don't. When he lies to me, I withdraw. I pull back. I am so sorry. I'm asking you right now to forgive me, Lord, for what I've done. And in addition, I've done it to other people, not just my husband. I was hurt when I was young. Other people have hurt me bad. My parents hurt me. People have treated me with total disrespect most of my life. That's why people lie to me and that's why they dishonor me. They don't respect me. But you do, Lord. You love me and you respect me. I'm sorry for hurting you. 
and I want my husband's spirit out of me in the name of Jesus. I want the soul tie with him broken right now tonight. Right now tonight. Come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. All offenses, all frustration, all disappointment with my husband, all the sadness, the regrets of marrying him, all the regrets of being with him for so long. I want it all removed from my body. I want the pain in my joints and in my stomach and my intestines gone. I don't want to live the rest of my life in sorrow, sadness, and pain. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come to me now. Come to me, Lord. Help me. God, help me. Jesus, help me. Sweet Jesus, help me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I let him go now. I let everybody go. All my abusers. It wasn't just my husband. Far from it. I let them all go in Jesus' mighty name. All of them. All of them. Come out. Come out of my throat. Come out of my chest. Come out of my stomach. I release my husband to the Lord. I forgive him. And I release this ought against him. This disappointment. This regret. The sorrow of being around him. Oh my God, Lord, it's it's killing me. The devil's using my husband to kill me and make me sick. He's making me sick. He's using my husband to destroy my appetite and my health. God help me. God help me. Sweet Jesus, help me. Please help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. I'm so sorry. I repent of it. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I hurt you. Please forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I hurt you. Please forgive me. Come on, let your tears go. Stop holding back. I'm so sorry, Lord. So sorry, Lord. I don't trust men anymore. I'm so sorry. I don't even trust men anymore. The devil has been trying to kill me since I was that high. He always sends me somebody to hurt me and to hurt my heart. Out. In Jesus' holy name, out. All offenses, all emotional pain. The spirit of infirmity in my joints come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Where's your pain at in your body? You don't feel any pain? You don't have any pain in your joints? Nothing? Okay, do you speak in tongues? I have. Okay. Now just follow me. Hello, Sati. Hello, Balava. Ondara Moshondai. Hello, Mashi Vive. Good, keep going. Ora Moshondara Vashi Derebebe. Hello, Balava Vashondara Vashi Dereba. Good, keep going. Andara Moshondara Vashi There it is. You know anything's coming on you. Speak it out. Andara Moshondara Vashi Dereba. Hello, 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 Moshondara Vashi Dereba. Speak it out. Speak it out now. Andara Moshi Balalula. Holy Spirit, come to me. Louder. Louder. Good. It's coming back now. Well done. Louder. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Come out. I release my husband in the name of Jesus. I release this art against my husband. Go in Jesus' name. I release this wickedness from me right now in Jesus' name. Go. Forgive me, Lord, for letting my gift of tongues get weak and for not using it. I'm so sorry. I'm going to use it tonight. Go. Good girl. Louder. Excellent. 
You got a nice gift of tongues. You just haven't been using it. It's beautiful. Louder. Go. Get out of that body right now. What are you doing in there? Rage and anger. You come out of there, you pervert. Come on, there you. There's one. Next one. Get out of my head. Come on, man. Hey, come out of that body right now. I feel that there's something that this will be. Yeah, breathe. Come out. Take a big breath. Spirit, come out of them lungs right now. Go. Come out of her lungs. Come out of there, you witch. You warlock. Sorcery, come out of her right now. Go. There. Go. There it is, right there. Go. Come out in Jesus' name. Get out of there. Go now. Come out. Come out. Come out of her lungs. Right now. <coughs> Come out. Come out of there right now. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out. Come out. Right now. Holy Ghost, come. Come on. Holy Spirit, come. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. 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 There he goes. Come out. There he goes. What's going on here? Brought my wife. Your wife? What's wrong yeah. with her? Uh, she was um, having insomnia and stuff like that. Uh, when did that start? Um, when did it hey, when did anxiety start? Last year. Last year. What happened last year? I don't know. You don't know what happened last year? You can't figure it out? Uh, and you get negative thoughts with your anxiety? <laughs> you always get negative thoughts. Click, click. And what are the normal negative thoughts? Are there any about him? No. Any about you? No. Who's it about? I don't know. No, your negative thoughts. You know what your thoughts are. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it's coming from. Like, I really don't know. No, I didn't ask you where you're coming from. What are the thoughts, the negative thoughts you're having? I don't know. That I'll never get better, I guess. You'll never get better? Okay. Close your eyes then. Let's go ahead and repent of that. Lord Jesus, when I said I'm not going to get any better and I believed it, what I was saying was, I have no faith. I have no faith, and I don't trust you, and that's not true. And I cast that lie out of me right now. Take a breath and go. Come out, you liar. Breathe. Come out, you liar. Breathe. Come out, spirit. Come out, unbelief and doubt. Fear and cowardice. Come out. There it is. Come out. Get him out of there. Come out. I repent of doubting. I repent of unbelief. I repent of fear. Out. Come out of there. Come out. There he is. Come out of there. Oh, coming out right now. Come out of that head right this second. Get out of there. You get out of that body right now. Come out of her throat right this second. Come out of there. Right there. Come out right now. Come out of that throat right now. Get out of that body right now. Come now. Don't you come out of that body. Come out of there, devil. I know you're there and you're coming out now. Come out of her right now. Mind control. Come out. Mind control. Get out of that body right now. You man hater, come out of there. Every bad man who ever touched her from the time she was a child to this moment, you come out. Come out. Unbelief and doubt. Take a breath and blow. Good blow again. Good girl. Blow. Come out. Come out. Out of that head right now. Come out. Come out of there. Mind control. I command you to come out of the woman of God. Unbelief and doubt. Get out of there. Go. Unbelief and doubt. Come out of me right now. Self pity. Self pity. Come out right now. Come out right now. Get out of there. Come out right this second. Come out right this second. Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus, get out of my wife right now. Satan, I command you. Get out of her right this second. Come out now. In the name of 
Come out, right Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Let it go. Come out. Come out. Come out. In the name of Jesus. Diablo, sweat up. Satan, Come out. No place in this body. Come out. Unbelief and doubt. Cowardice. Fear. Come out. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out. Yeah, come out. Come out. Get out of that come body, out. I said. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of that body. Right now. You tell me to come out. Come out of me right now. Spirit of fear, come out of me. Say that. There he comes. Come out. Come on now. Come on, sweetheart. Let's go. Get him out of there right now. Come on. Fight harder. Fight harder. Yes, yes, yes. Come out. Come out. Fear, come out come of out. my body right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Say it. Say it. <laughs> come out, fear. Come, come out. on. Say it. Come out. Come out. How you doing? What happened? I'm alright. What happened? I feel better a little bit. Um, She paid for me. I have a lady to talk to. I have a phone number to call and a lady to talk to for somewhere to... Okay. For someone to stay and um, be safe and better my life, I guess. Yes. Are you time to fight, people? Yeah. Oh, you're you must forgive. Okay. Remember, really the demons cold. will resist if you really do not forgive yourself. Yeah, I know. If you uh, do not forgive others, right? you must forgive. Remember, you must forgive. Well, when you stand praying, you must yeah. forgive. Okay. You must forgive. You can't hold back any no. unforgiveness. Okay. You must forgive from your heart. Lord, I forgive. Lord, I forgive. I release all unforgiveness to you. I release all unforgiveness towards myself to you in the name of Jesus. I forgive with my heart. I forgive with my heart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Did you know what I was doing? I, that was a heavenly language I was praying. And the only person that interprets it is the Holy Spirit. Then I guess I, I have the Holy Spirit. I know you do. The Holy Spirit uh, gives you a prayer language. A prayer language so you can pray and the devil doesn't know what you're saying. Oh, that's why sometimes I can speak different languages and do things and everybody oh. doesn't understand me. Can you speak different languages right now? Go ahead. Uh, I don't know. Right now I'm not feeling good. I. What do you mean not feeling good? Sick? Uh -huh. A little stress. You're stressed out? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, that's not you. That's a spirit of fear in your stomach. That's the spirit of fear in your stomach. He causes anxiety on people. Yeah. Okay. Now, before you leave, I want to give you some money, so don't leave yet, okay? Okay. Okay. There he is, right there. Kansas City guy. Oh. Hey, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Good. What's going on? What happened to you? Uh, Stand up. You're from Kansas City. I'm from yeah. Emporia. Yeah, I talk to you. How you doing? Yeah, what's going on with you? Oh, nothing. 11 years of demons and uh, accidentally talking to them on Ouija boards when I was little and seeing demons, talking mm -hmm. all the time. I got rage now, rejection is me. Yeah. I saw Scott today. I went for a session with him. Oh, you did? Yeah, too. And I talked to uh, Rick. We had a really good session back there. So, oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to Now, what else do you need to repent of? Uh... I don't know. I can't imagine. Uh, now, deception, greed, envy, sin, masturbation. Now, is it fair to say you, you've lived a very sinful life? Yeah. Okay. Did you ask God to forgive you? Yes. Okay. He did. Yeah, yeah. So there's no sin left. But there's something between you and the Lord that you haven't fixed. Yeah. And here's what it is. Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. When you were sinning all those years and hurting everybody, yeah. the person you hurt most was God. Yeah. And you hurt his feelings because he's the only person that's ever actually truly loved you. I know. There's nobody else. Yeah, I know. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Close your eyes and take a big breath. Big breath. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, my friend from Kansas City is here, and 
You sent him here because he spent his life picking up legions of demons. He's done everything. He's done everything. And I'm so sorry for what's happened. I'm so sorry for what's happened. I'm sorry that he hurt you because when he hurt himself, he was hurting you. And when he hurt others, he was hurting you. And tonight I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, to give him godly sorrow. Godly sorrow for what he's done. Because he loves you and he hurt you and he wants to truly tell you he's sorry. Sweet Jesus, I'm so incredibly sorry for what I've done. Go on. I'm so sorry, Lord. I hurt you. I got involved in witchcraft. I just want to say thank you for everything you do. Okay. God bless you. Please forgive me, Lord. I'm so sorry. So sorry. I love you, dear Lord. I love you and I praise you. I thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for forgiving me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's the Holy Ghost touching you. Thank you, Jesus. He loves you and cares about you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You speak in tongues? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Go ahead. Louder. I command every altar to collapse and come out in the name of Jesus. Come out of that body. I command every evil spirit in his brain, come out of that brain right this second. Mind control, hatred, rage, and anger. Spirits of lust, demon tongues. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come witchcraft and sorcery. Come. Come out in Jesus' name. Witchcraft and sorcery. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there, you witch. Go now. Come out now, you witch. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. I am not sick. I'm not mentally ill. It's a lie. Come out of me right now in Jesus' name. I am not a sinner. I am not a servant of Satan. I command you to come out. Get out of my face right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out of my face right now, spirit. Come out of there right now. Hatred and anger and murder. Go. Come out, rage and anger. Go. Leave that body. Leave that body now. In Jesus' name. Come on. Get out of my body. Rage and hate. Rage and anger. Go now. Hatred and anger. Get out. Lust. Come out in Jesus' name. Spirit, come out right now. Go now. Insanity, come out. Lust. Rage and hate. Get out of my body right now. Get out of my body right now. Go, Satan. Go, Satan. Go, Satan. Go, Satan. Go, Satan. Get out of my body. There he comes. Here he comes. Come out. There he comes. Come out right now. Insanity, come out. Babbling, come out. Go in Jesus. He does not have bipolar. That's you, spirit. Come out, spirit. He does not have bipolar. That's a lie. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. In Jesus' holy name. There he comes. Keep coughing. Come out. There it comes. Keep coughing. 
There it comes. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Come out. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out right now. There he comes. Next one. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Go. Next one. Next one. Come out quicker. Devil, come out quicker. Controller, come out. Controller. Demons from the father, come out. Demons from the mother, come out. Demons from adultery and fornication, come out. Right now, go. Come out. Come out of his throat. Come out of his throat. Go now. Come out quicker. Out. Out. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out. 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 Come out. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Quicker, devil. Come out quicker. All of you, come out. Take hands and come out. Hold hands and come out, all of you. All of you, come out. Every demon from Kansas City, come out. Every church demon, come out. Every demon from church, go. Go now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of his genitals. Go. Come out of the spine. Go. Out of that spine. Go. Out, 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 out. Father, peace, my Lord. Green mist. Go. Green anointing. Go. The anointing. Go. The anointing. Go. Come out of my head. Mind control. Come out. Get out of me right now. Go. Go. Get out. Come out. Mind control, come out. <laughs> Hurry up. Keep coming. Keep coughing. <coughs> Keep coughing. Come out, devil. There he comes. Next one, go. Next one, go. Next one, go. Every altar, come out. Everyone, all of them out. Personality disorder, come here he comes. Come out. Every altar, come out. Every one of them, come out. Hurry up. Every one of them leave. I command you to break down and come out. Right now, go. Right now, go. Right now, go. Uh, right now, go. <coughs> Lust. Masturbation. Go. Pornography. Go. Drugs. Drugs. Come out. Come out. Alcohol. Come out. Alcohol. Come out. Go in Jesus' name. There you go. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. YouTubers, put your hand on your body and command the spirit to come out of you right now. Put your hand on your body. Come out right now. Get out of there. Get out of that body. Go. Go now. Help this poor guy. In, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Right now. Come out of him. Come out of him. Get out. Come out. By the blood that Jesus shed, come out. Go in Jesus' name. Get out of there. Satan, I command you. I'm not living in sin anymore. No more sin. No more lust. No more lies. Come out of me. Satan, I said no. I said no. Satan, loose your hold. No. I said no. Get out of my face. Come out of my neck. Come out of my joints. Come out in Jesus' holy name. I've been called by God. I'm not living in sin anymore. I bind your power, Satan. Commanding you to go. Get out. There he comes. Satan, go now. Go now. Go now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. In the name of the Son of God. Get out of my body. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Hurry up, I said. Get out of my body. Get out of my body right now. Go. 
get out of my body right now. Come out right now. That is phenomenal. Hey, did you repent of that tonight? You didn't repent? Huh? You did? Okay. Good. God heard you. Now you can get them all out of there. Can you help me? Hmm? Yeah. Can you help me say Jake? Yeah. It's Jake that's in there, and he's been there for years. Yeah. All right, Lord, we ask you to go to Jake right now and bless him and forgive him. We ask you to bless him and forgive him. And we, re of, his, of his own free will, he agrees to release Jake from his soul right now. Go. Get out of that body right now. Come out, Jake. <coughs> there he is. Jake, come out. Jake, come out. Go. Come out right now. Jake, out. Out, Jake. Out, Jake. Come out. Come on out. Out, Jake. Come out. Evil. Come out. Evil. 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 Get out of that throat. Come out of that throat. Come out of that mind right now. Evil. Evil. Leave that body right now. Evil. Come out. Evil. Go. Hurry up. Evil. Evil. Come out. Jake, I command you, loose the man of God. Loose him. Get out of there, Jake. 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 Stinking demon. Come out right now. Come out of his throat. There he is. Come out. Go now. Come out. Go now. Come out. Go now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Go now. Go now right now. Hurry up. Jake. Get out of that throat right now. Come out. There he goes. Come out right now. Evil. Come out of this man of God. Evil. 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 Get out of my head, Jake, right now. And don't ever come back. Get out of my stomach and don't ever come back. There he is. Come out of my stomach right now. Come out of my stomach right now. Come out of my lungs. Come out of my chest right now in Jesus' holy name. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, I told you no. I told you no. Satan, I told you no. No. Get out of there. Now, I said. Now, get out of my throat. Satan, I told you no. No. No, in Jesus' name. Jake. Get out of my body, Jake. I do not want Jake anymore. I do not want to think about him anymore. I don't want anything to do with him anymore. I'm releasing him right now. Go, Jake, go. All my hopes I had for Jake are over. Come out now. Go. Sin and wickedness. Come out of me right now. I renounce wickedness and sin. I renounce it in Jesus' name. Go, Jake. Get out of my throat. Get Stop lying to me, Jake. He's a liar. It was my duty to deliver him. No, that was a lie. You come out of there right now. That was a soul tie demon. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Now just repeat after me, okay? Burra baba. Que lo sati. Eshoba. Boya basata. Now did you notice that I was speaking in uh, short syllables? <laughs> Yeah. And did you notice they were clear syllables? Yeah. That was different from yours? Yeah. Did you notice the difference? Uh -huh. Great. Okay, now let's try it again, only this time you add some syllables on your own. Short syllables, clear and different ones. Short and different. Karashata, Veto, Valova, Kota Vashata, Melo Vashike. Good. Kanda Vashanda, Debo Shabba, Balu Shatite, Velo Vasha. Excellent. Use different syllables. Good. Very good. Kendo, Rabashata, Kola Vashata. You speak in tongues? You don't? Oh, okay. Stand right here. Konda Vashada. Uda Vasheka, Melova, Vandosha. You repeat after me. Kola Vasha, Beloba, Vandoria, Vakashu, Borashake. Notice how easily you were repeating that. Notice that. 
No problem at all. Now let's do it again, only this time you add some syllables like him. You add syllables. Notice I was talking in short syllables. Kolavasha. That's four syllables. Notice that? <coughs> Come out, devil. Get out of there, buddy. Come out, devil. Gonda, Shandora, Vashada. Vendo, Vashadi. Bonda, Vava. Get out of there, devil. Come out. You notice the difference? You notice the difference in that from what you're doing before? Yeah. Now this, I want to show you how you can draw in the Holy Ghost anytime you want it. Just put a little hum to what you were doing, like this. Jesus. Good. Good, good, good. Get out of my throat. Come out of there. Right now, don't stop until you're all gone. Come out right now. Come out right now. I'm not stopping you. You're all gone. Come out of me right now. The. You get out of my head right now. What do you think you're doing in there? What do you think you're doing in there? Get out of my head. Stop putting lustful thoughts and dreams into my subconscious. Stop sending me naked women, cleavage, breasts, legs. Stop tempting me. I command you in Jesus' name. I am resisting that. I am casting that out. I command every lustful thought and visual. Get out of my body right now. Go right now. Get out of my body right now. Lustful visual. Lustful visual. Lustful visual. There it comes. Go. Come out. Stop stalling in there and come out quicker. Stop stalling. Here he comes. There he is right there. Come out right now. Leave her throat. Leave her throat right now. Out. There it comes. There it comes. Get out quickly. Quickly. Get out right now. In the name of Jesus, come on. There it comes. There it goes. Good. There it goes. Good. Good. Good, good, good. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of that groin, you pervert. Come out of my genitals right now. You stinking masturbating demon. Come on out right now. There he is. That's him. Come up. All the way up. Get out of my body right now. Come out of my body right now. Oral sex. Come out of my lips. Oral sex, come out of my lips right now. Oral sex, I told you to come out of my lips right now. Adultery and fornication, come out of me right now. Anal sex, come out of me. Go. Come out right now. Lift out. Don't tell me no, but come out. Don't t don't say no. Come out, spirit. Come out, spirit. Hurry up. Come out, spirit. There he comes. Go. Come out, you pervert. Pervert, come out. Pervert, come out. There he comes. Pervert, come out. Come out right now. Go. Go. Come out there. Go. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come out right now. Come out right now. Get out of that body right this second, you stinking spirit. Hurry up. Come out right now. Come out. I'm sick of this. There he is. Come out right now. I'm tired of it. <coughs> tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. That's a tough case. This guy right here, have you met him? No. He's, he's got, went through PTSD from a neighbor that was traumatized, and then he went through a oh. divorce. He hasn't felt one thing in 15 years. Hasn't he what? Can't, haven't felt anything spiritual in 15 years. Oh. He can't get a, a cough out of him mm -hmm. in 20 minutes. Walking through, forgiving everybody in and himself. Uh -huh. uh, that guy got his gift of tongues. He had demonic oh. tongues. Oh, yeah, so I fixed tongues. it, oh, and then he was singing God. in tongues. But that, oh, that Kansas yeah. City guy is in bad shape. Oh yeah, he it's sat horrible. In, he He's chucked and sweated, like just instantly yeah, he started coming out. Yeah, and he flipped out after he left VidCon's. He said, oh, "I was boy. like, oh, God, it got way worse." He said, oh, "He's no. so full, full of anger." Oh no. Uh oh. Yeah. Now, what's that guy's name? <laughs> hey, your name, Roy. Oh. 
Your name Doug? Yeah. Oh, Doug. How are you feeling right now? You feel numb? Okay, yeah. that's not a good feeling. That ain't right. <clears throat> now, is there anything you need to repent of? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, there might be something, but I don't know. All right. Do you have any bad feelings about yourself or emotions? Um, I have been talking about the feeling of uh, failure that I have failed in my Christian life, I have failed to be who I am. Did you ask God to forgive you for that? Yeah. You did? Did he forgive you? He did? Yeah. Does that still bother you? Um, in the sense that I've been struggling with I've been just crying out to God to show me how to get out of this cage so that I'm not afraid to minister to people in whatever way he wants me to. Okay, just, you I speak in tongues? Up. Yes. You do? Let's hear it. Okay, stop. Yeah, that's legitimate. Okay, here, here's the problem. You're living in a delusion. There's nothing wrong with you. There's no sin. You told me you asked God to forgive you, right? Okay. You don't have anything left to repent of, right? Listen, dude, you're ninety percent ahead. You're ahead of ninety percent of the people that were here tonight. I don't know, but well, I do. I run this place. Okay. 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 <laughs> that most of the people here had sin they needed to repent of. Okay, you don't, right? Oh, the thought that just came to my mind. What thought? Uh, I had to talk with somebody and explain to him what I was experiencing, like I did to you, the deadness and others. And he said it's because you've been going to church all your life listening to sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon and there's been no outlet there's it's like you know, i've been a dead sea of just a lot of input but no outflow yeah then you get stagnant exactly and that's what he well, said yeah but so, the point i'm trying to make is there's nothing wrong with you okay. being stagnant is a separate issue okay okay this what you're doing is living in a delusion because you think your past failures mean something. Okay, I understand. They don't mean anything. Okay. Everybody starts here and they go forward. Okay? And then your other issue that you just said, that's a great revelation. You're not, uh, you're supposed to be a conduit. Okay? <laughs> not a dead end. Exactly. And that's easy to fix. Now, do you know how to sing in tongues? Yes. Okay, close your eyes. Lord, uh, my friend is living in a delusion. He thinks there's something wrong with him. I guess he thinks he's sick or something. It's actually the devil buffaloing him. He's making a fool out of him. He's living in a delusion. It's not real. It's not real. There's nothing wrong with him. There's nothing wrong with the guy, Lord. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Say that. Don't touch him. Just put your hand right there. I command you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Jake, the demons from Jake, you come out of him. Come out in Jesus' name. Get out of that body. Come out right now. Hurry up. There they come. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus. Go now. Tell them to go. Spirits, come out. Say it. Spirits come out. 
Go in Jesus' name. Go. There you go. Come out in the name of the Lord. Get out of there. Let this young man go. Jake, come out of him. In Jesus' holy name. I renounce Jake. Come out of my feet. I release him right now in the name of Jesus. Father, forgive me for thinking there was something wrong with me and that I don't have the anointing. <clears throat> I could have been ministering to people for the last, I don't know how many years, and I wasn't doing it because I only <coughs> believe in lies. It's not true. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you hear that? Here, do it again. <coughs> Satan, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on. Use your anointing. Come out. Come out right now. Go. You get every spirit out of that kid. Do it right now. Come on. Go on out. You are not supposed to be in that body, fool. What are you doing in there? You're not supposed to be in there. He's supposed to be serving the Lord. There it comes. There he comes. Good. How's she doing? She's doing great. Well, I know uh -huh. her from out there. You know, know her? her from out there. I know you from I know you from in here. <laughs> How's my girl doing? Uh huh. What happened tonight? Huh? What happened to you tonight? Um, marriage problems. <laughs> what, what's wrong with your husband? What's the story? Um, Is he, he here? No, he doesn't believe. What's his name? Angel. Angel. Okay. And what's he into? What kind of sin is he into? Um, cursing. Cursing. Music, bad music. music. Um, I'm not sure if it's lusting. Does he cheat on you? No, he doesn't cheat on me. But Porn? Lusting, I don't know. Okay. What else does he do? Um, probably looking at girls, maybe. Like, you know, like... How long have you been married? Uh, 16 years. 16. Okay. What's his name again? Angel. His name is Angel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now... And Kids huh? and children problem. How many kids you guys got? I have eight. What'd you say? Eight. I have eight kids. <laughs> you got eight kids? You just you and him? Mm -hmm. You got you two had eight kids. Mm -hmm. We've been together for twenty one years. Oh. Okay. Now let me explain something to you. The spirits from your husband. Okay. Transferred in here. Yeah. When you marry somebody who has demons, or even if you sleep with them, or and you're not married, even you sleep with them, some of their spirits can transfer in. Yeah, because we yeah we had kids before marriage. Okay, but uh, he has never gone through deliverance. Right? Well, he's been to church before. We went to the Mormon church. That's where we started at first. Oh, my God. So now he's got Mormon demons. Those are really, really powerful. Very bad. That's where, yeah, because that's where we got baptized and married. You got baptized in a Mormon? And married. And then when did you leave the Mormon church? Um, I don't know. Uh, two weeks ago or years no. ago? Um, I was... I was in the Mormon church on my third with my third child. My okay. Third child. So wow. So she's that was at least right now. Uh huh. So, so that was years ago. Yeah, we got out okay. of there like a few weeks after. I think a month like, uh, later okay. after we got married. All right. Now close your eyes. Take a big breath. Take a breath. <gasps> there you go. Breathe again. Big one. Big breath. Good girl. Okay. Big breath. Let's go. Good. Come out of there. Go. Father God, I have see this beautiful woman standing right here. She uh, has been into some very bad things in her past. And she has had a very hard life. And she has worked very hard for years raising her children and taking care of an unbelieving husband. 
and it got worse when they were in Mormonism. And so right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we apologize for having anything to do with the Mormon church. We apologize for listening to their doctrines, which are false. We apologize for getting baptized in the Mormon church. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I renounce Mormonism, Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, the Angel Moroni, the golden tablets, the golden plates. We renounce this false doctrine and this sin in the name of Jesus Christ. And right now, Lord, I want to release the Church of Mormonism out of my soul and into your loving hands. I want to release it right now in Jesus name. Okay, take a breath and blow. Blow. Blow out of your mouth. Blow. Go. Come out of her. Spirit, come out. Moroni, come out of there. Come out of her. Moroni, come out of that body right now. All right, people. People Mormonism, online. go. Live stream. Mormon, Mormonism, you gotta go. You got to fight. Come out. It's time I to fight. It. I command it to go right if now. If you won't fight. Mormonism, come out. God can't fight for you. Come out. I this is a spiritual husband. war. You got to fight. You got to fight. Let him go. You tell that devil in the mighty name of Jesus, it's no today, it's no tomorrow, and it's always no. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As you fight, as you enter into the spiritual warfare, God is with you. And if God is with you, who can be against you? You must fight. No fear. No doubt. No unbelief. Not now, not ever, for the Lord is with you. Lord, whatever you have. And if the Lord is with you, who can be against you? Get him saved. Fight. I give you permission. In the mighty name of Jesus. The conquering name of Jesus. God wants you healed and delivered. He wants you healed and delivered. God did not send you to that situation that almost destroyed you. God did not send you to that situation. That Spirit, brought you problems. You, that brought you pain. You that brought you heartache. That brought you sickness. That brought you disease. God did not do it. Don't you blame God and tell and say, "Oh, right well, God must allow this to happen to me, right so I, this could happen." No, the devil sets you up. Come the out. devil sets you up. The devil sent you that Hurry that up. boyfriend that used you, you that hurt you, Spirit. that abused you, or that woman that you hurt you and abused you. The devil sent that person to you. It wasn't Come God. Out of my mind and my brain. It Come wasn't out of my God. Lungs. Come out of my stomach. Now as you as you Come repent, out, transfer spirit from my husband. Come God out. will fight for you. As every you fight, God husband, will fight. Parents. Come out, my in -laws Come on, streamers. Out. You gotta let it rip. Out of there. In the mighty name of Jesus. I hate you. Come out. Time is short. Time is you. short. Now. now the devil is lusting Come out after now. your soul. He I wants you your soul out. in hell, burning where he's going. Now. He hates everything that God loves, and Come that's out. you and me. Hurry up. Come out. Come on. Every spirit from my husband's parents, every spirit from my, my family tree, every spirit right now, come out in Jesus' holy name. Get out of there. Come out of there. Right now, I take authority of you. I command you to come out of my throat. Get out of my throat right now. Come out of my stomach. Come out of my womb and my vagina right now. Come out of there, you pervert. My husband's lust demons. Come out of me. The disappointments for my husband not being a Christian. Come out of me. Disappointments and sorrow. Leave. Disappointments and sorrow. Come out. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come out of here. Come out. 
Come on. I renounce these demons in the name of Jesus. I hate their guts. All lust demons, all anger demons, all my husband's demons, all Mormon demons. I hate you. You're not too strong. Come out of me now. You're not too strong. Come out of me now. You're not too strong. Leave. Come out of my throat. Come out of my chest and my throat right now. Hurry up. Come out. All the way up. I hate you. I told you to come out. I'm telling you to come out right now, and I mean it. I mean it right now. Come out of me. I mean it. Come out of my body right now. Come out. I mean it. Get out of my body right now. Come out. I mean it. Right now. Come out of my body right now. Amen. Come out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. Spirit husband, I command you to come out of my womb right this second. Get out of there. Get out of my body right now. I lay hands on myself and I command the spirits to obey the word of God. To obey the blood that Jesus shed. Here he comes. Hold that. Come out. Come out right now. Hurry up, devil. Come out of my stomach right now. Here he comes. Come out of me. All my husband's demons, come out. There they are. Keep coughing. Come out. Hurry up. I forgive my husband and I release him. I release my husband right now. I release the Mormon spirits, evil. Moroni, come out. Joseph Smith demons, come out. Hurry up. Mormons, come out. Hurry up. Hurry up. Brigham Young demons, come out. Come out. False doctrine, come out. Book of Mormon demons, come out. Doctrines and covenants, come out. Right now. Go. Mormon baptism, come out. Hurry up. Mormon baptism, come out. Mormon baptism, come out right now. Go now, keep coughing. They're coming out now. They're not too strong. They're coming out right now. Come out right now. Stand over here. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out.